Daniela Camboni, and welcome back to StansberryInvestor.com. Before we start today's segment, I want to bring you up to speed on a really cool event happening at Stansberry Research because on October 20th, you're going to meet a man who will perhaps change the way you look at money forever. His name is Matt McCall, and he's Stansberry Research's newest analyst. I've been following Matt's career for years. And I can tell you, he has a track record uh, that's quite impressive. He has more than 1,000% winners, over 40 of them, than likely any other analyst in America over the last decade. He even recommended Bitcoin back in 2014 before it soared 100 times in value. And on October 20th, he's revealing a huge prediction nobody else is talking about right now, as well as the name of a tiny company he thinks could go down as Stansbury's most successful stock market recommendation ever. Best of all, he's sharing all of this with you 100% free. So for more details and to sign up for this important event, I know I'll be tuning in uh, to catch that ticker symbol he'll be announcing. You simply have to go to mattprediction.com. Again, it's mattprediction.com. All right, let's get to today's interview now. My guest today is a real mining mogul. He's the former chairman of Gold Corp. Please welcome to the show, Ian Telfer. Ian, it's a real treat to have you on. Well, thanks, Daniela. I'm glad to be here. Well, you know, I say it's a real treat because I know you rarely do media interviews um, and you're such an incredible name in the space. So to get your thoughts today um, is really a, a special treat for the audience. So thank you. Thank you for joining me. Um, it's been a, a while since we last spoke on air, Correct. even though we had a lot of conversations um, offline together. And that's why I said, hey, Ian, do you mind joining me? Because I think your insights would be really valuable to our investors uh, and audience watching here. So I want to start with the gold price because obviously uh, this is this is the topic on everyone's mind. Ian, um, you know, we saw that even after the recent jobs number miss for September, gold still did not rally off that news. So the question is, you know, given the current economic landscape, why are gold prices uh, not much higher here? Well, I think there's a number of reasons, and uh, you know your viewers have have been dealing with all of them. Um, but I think I think in the shorter term, I think the fact that there's now two and a half trillion dollars worth of Bitcoin out there, I think that's providing an alternative to people that don't like government currencies. And uh, I think part of the driving, part of the driver of the gold price over the years has been people that don't trust government uh, printing, governments printing money. And so they went to something like gold. Well, this go around, now they have an alternative and people will argue whether it's a real alternative or whether it's gonna be made illegal or whatever, but it's out there and it's attracted a lot of investment. So I think that's the main reason that people aren't focused as much on gold as they look at inflation or they look at the poor job growth in the United States. Um, and, and that's one reason the price of gold has been, you know, so disappointing to so many people. But the other factor I think in the gold business is that over longer periods of time, the shares of gold mining companies have had a tough time creating long-term value. And you could look at the biggest gold mining companies and take them over 30 years or 20 years, and the stocks are basically flat. And when you have so much of the investment community focused on giving financial security to people that are retiring, they want to invest in things that are going to grow, maybe slowly, but are going to grow over time. And gold shares just haven't done that. So I think it's the combination of the short term and the long term uh, that is hurting the gold price. And I'm not sure it's gonna change in a hurry. Okay, fascinating insights. First, I have to agree with you on the Bitcoin component. Just to dissect that a little bit, Ian, because I'm interested to hear you say that you feel it is taking away some momentum from gold because it, it's a debate. Some experts I speak to say, no, no, it's not hurting gold at all. And then when I speak to a lot of banks where they're actually seeing real numbers, they're saying, no, there actually is money flowing out of gold into Bitcoin. Have you seen any of this firsthand? Any insights you can share here? Well, just anecdotally, I mean, I, I, I don't have access to the, the funds flow, but just anecdotally, I have friends who are gold bugs 
for the last 20 years. And now <laughs> they're starting to invest a little bit in Bitcoin. And because um, Bitcoin, again, and I'm not, I am not an investor in Bitcoin. I'm not promoting Bitcoin at all, but I have been amazed at how the major US banks now are getting involved in it, giving it credibility, pushing back on regulation so it can be a more, a more normal type investment for people. I didn't expect that to happen, but it's happening now. And the other thing is, is you know, with Bitcoin, to the extent I understand it, there will be a finite number of Bitcoins. And that appeals to a lot of people. And whereas with gold, uh, new discoveries could come about at any time. And every time there's a new discovery, it slightly devalues the amount of gold that's available to invest in. So the combination again of the, the fact that there will be a limited number of Bitcoins at some point in time, I think that appeals to a lot of people, appeals to a lot of people. You know, and getting back to mining shares, right? Obviously, not a great year for the mining sector. But could the counter argument not be, well, there could be deep value opportunities here, getting in low, and you know, it could potentially be lucrative if you choose the right stocks. Absolutely, absolutely, that very possible. But I think, you know, as you know, prices are set at the margin. And it's the last investor in that sets the price, whether it's gold or Bitcoin. And with a slow leaking of investors from the gold market, it's hard to get that price up. And I think that's what the disappointment has been. But, you know, I know offline we were having a conversation with gold, even at, you know, even though it's not above 2000, but even at 1700, even at 1500, 1400, with most mining companies all in sustaining costs being around, you know, 700, 800, even if it's 900, shouldn't the miners be able to provide better value here? Well, it's difficult. I mean, a typical gold mine has a, a mine life of about 15 years. And it takes you five or six years to permit it and prove it up and, 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 and build it and start production. And then you've got about 15 years to get your money back. Some of them are a lot longer, but a lot of them are in that area. And um, if you catch a, a gold price downdraft for the first five or six years of production, you're in trouble because you've got that 15 years to, to uh, generate whatever cash you, cash you can, and then, try to create enough wealth to go out and buy your next deposit. And it's very hard to do. And so the gold companies keep issuing shares um, as they go yeah. on. And I think this turns investors off. But do you think compared to five, six years ago, the mining industry has done a really good cleanup consolidation? Uh, are, are you proud of where the miners are today? Well, I think they're, they've done a great job. They're in much better shape now uh, on the financial side, on the debt side on the cash generation side, on the dividend side. I mean, they've done a much, much better job. Um, but their challenge is, of course, their reserves aren't growing. And so, uh, the, you know, they've taken the money and they're paying it to the shareholders instead of acquiring assets or, or exploring for assets. And so they're caught in the middle there. And we, they went overboard on acquisitions 10 or 12 years ago. And now I think they're going overboard on paying dividends. Interesting. So let's talk about exploration because I know six or five years ago when we last spoke, you were saying the gold mining industry uh, was years be behind, you know, oil and gas uh, when it came to exploration. Mm -hmm. you know, with the new technology and drones we're using and AI, uh, have we come a long ways or are we still really in dinosaur times compared to other sectors? We have not come a long way. And the reason we haven't come a long way is the big advantage the oil and gas people have over the, the hard rock miners is oil and gas has a different specific gravity than the rock that it's found in. And so they can use seismic and sound and all different things to see what's underground and see where the difference is between the the base rock and the oil and gas itself. The challenge for the gold mining or the whole mining industry is that the rock that contains the gold looks exactly the same as the rock that doesn't contain the gold. 
And we haven't found a way to explore without actually drilling holes and taking samples, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I don't think that'll ever change. And that is the challenge. Really? Why do you say we'll never change despite new technology? Why? Well, again, you know, there's very successful mines in the world mining one gram of gold per ton. Okay. Now think of that one gram of gold per ton. So, you know, I'm sitting at a dining room table that if, if it was cubed up it would probably be two tons. So you put two grams of gold in there spread very evenly throughout it all. You can't detect it. And they've tried and tried and tried. And at Gold Corp, we tried all kinds of the newest technologies to speed up that process and to see if while miners were underground, they could use a like a laser gun or something and aim it at the rock. And would that tell them where the gold was and where the gold wasn't? But the reality was we just couldn't do it. And, you know, I spent 35 years looking at all these developments and I, there's almost no progress. I mean, once they find it, they're better at analyzing it and they're better at constructing a mine and, and avoiding dilution when they take out the gold. But back to your question about exploration, on the exploration side, it's very, very, very tough. And, and you know, from the stocks that are out there, the number of new significant discoveries is shrinking all the time. Absolutely. So, so Ian, what would be your message? Because we've spoken about how vital a junior's, uh, role, juniors play in finding discoveries and exploration. Um, we have a lot of junior mining CEOs that tune in and watch the show, all people in the junior mining space. What would be your words of advice to the juniors? Oh, very tough question. Very tough question. I mean, and before I answer, I have to say that my first sort of 10 years in mining was spent exploring with zero success. And then my next 20 years was spent acquiring deposits with a lot of success. And so I'm not an, the person to talk to about how you make exploration successful. It's a very random uh, process. Uh, lightning can strike anywhere, um, but no, you can't. It's interesting in the gold mining business, especially. You can't say which of the major gold mining companies or minor gold mining companies is the best miner because it, it's random. There are, they all have good mines and bad mines. And you can't say which of the mining companies is the best at exploration. Because again, there's hits and misses on both sides. So it's very, very tough to quantify what's working for somebody or what's not working for somebody. It's uh, Some company makes a major discovery and then they're flooded with money and they go off exploring again and they don't find anything else. It's just that tough an environment out there. Sorry to be so positive, but no. that's just been my experience. That's been my experience. Well, let me ask you this, Ian. You know, you've obviously had a, an extremely successful career. Gold's been good to you. If you had to start your career all over again today, 2021, um, would you still choose the gold mining industry or would you perhaps start in crypto? <laughs> Very good question. And I have given it zero thought. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean the, successful, the successful gold mining companies, um, I think in almost every case, they may have started with a discovery, but then they grew into large companies through acquisition. And, and so would I go back into gold? Yeah, but I'd go back into the same way I went into it you know, with Gold Corp is that we would go out and acquire um, available opportunities. And uh, you know, we, would, we would take price risk and some technical risk and some political risk but we weren't gonna take the complete risk of exploration. And if you get those other risks sort of under control, it works very well. So was that part of the problem today? Not enough companies taking that price risk, Ian? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I think if, you're, if you're trying to grow a gold mining company through acquisition uh, or exploration, but through acquisition, uh, the best risk to take is price risk. Um, it, it's always been interesting to me because, you know, again, so many of the mid-sized uh, gold mining companies are the same size now they were 20 years ago. I'm not going to name them, but the, they were mid-tier producers then and they're mid-tier producers there. And if you look at their stock prices over 20 years of flat or down. And, and the big mistake they've made in not growing um, is that the, they've used some consensus gold price 
to analyze acquisitions. And if you use the consensus gold price, you'll never buy anything ever, 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 because it's baked into the assets price. And so the, where I had a little bit of success was betting on a higher gold price. And I happened to do it in a period of time where the gold price kept going higher. And that worked extremely well. But, but I, as I say to a CEO, take price risk. Don't take technical risk and be very careful about exploration risk. Really interesting thoughts, Ian. Um, talking about that price risk, and we started talking about price at the start. You know, you're a voice of reason in this space. So when you hear of calls of, you know, I think gold's going to 5,000, I think gold's going to 10,000, I've heard 20,000, I've heard 50,000. Yeah. Where do you fall in that camp? Well, I think the price of gold will do very well. Um, but as I say, with the competition they've got from other asset classes, I can't see it going to $5,000. I just can't see it. Wow. Sorry. No, no, I, it's, um, look, you know, you, many would say you're a gold bug and gold bugs come on the show usually and say 5,000, that's nothing. We'll easily yeah. get there. So. Uh, I, I'm kind of shocked to hear you say that. But you've been listening to them. For, you know, I've been listening to those same <laughs> people time. save five thousand dollars for thirty years, and you know, it, it hasn't quite worked out that way. But maybe the question is, do you need gold to get to five thousand? Right. Well, it, it, I think. I mean, the the big companies in the industry now, as I say, they've cleaned up their balance sheets. They are paying regular dividends. Um, they are managing the resources that they have, I think, very, very well. And uh, so, yeah, no, I think it's a valid, viable place to put some of your investments. And, and I think they'll do mm. quite well over time. But there's a lot of competition out there. So I, then let me, should I make the assumption that I don't think you think silver would hit triple digits? <laughs> well, I'm big silver, silver bull. You know, having started silver Wheaton or Wheaton Precious now, and that's done extremely well. But uh, but triple digits? No, I don't. Uh, I was excited to bring this up because I hosted a debate between Frank Justra, who you obviously know very well, versus yeah. Michael Saylor. Yeah. One of the points Michael Saylor kept hammering home, uh, or the the issue he has with gold miners is, you know, and he if he he used Newmont as an example. Um, is why don't they own gold on their balance sheets? Now, mm -hmm. I, I know what I would say is the counter argument, but what's your take on that? Does he have any um, point saying that, right saying that? Well, companies have tried that and um, it's, it becomes very confusing for investors. Uh, some companies have tried that and, and instead of selling all their gold every quarter or every year, uh, they only sold enough to pay their expenses and they kept the rest of the gold on their balance sheet. The problem was is when analysts tried to look at it and, and, and separate out what was produced and then what was sold and then what was in inventory, it got very confusing for doing the calculations to compare the company. So that was one, that's one negative reason. And the second one is, yeah, it's an interesting thought, but certainly in the last few years, um, keeping gold on your balance sheet, uh, I don't think would have had much impact on anyone's financials. And just to wrap, um, I guess, Ian, you know, going back to the price, and I find your observations very interesting. So despite the landscape of, you know, the trillions of dollar of debt, um, yeah. endless money printing, um, that won't be enough to move gold past any price for you? 2,500. Okay. Okay, yeah. fair enough. 2,500, yeah. Of the, because of the crypto component. Well, a combination of the, of the disappointments uh, yeah. in the longer term performance of the gold shares and the crypto. I think those two things are like, a, it's, it's a barbell going the wrong way, you know? Yeah. You got the short term people in crypto and you got the long term people saying, you know what, I've owned I won't name a company, but one of the major gold mining companies for 10 years, I haven't made any money. You, you said you, you're, you're not in crypto. Uh, would you consider adding it to your portfolio? Well, as I say, I've been surprised at watching the big US banks start to get into it 
And yeah. now they're starting these crypto ETFs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, yeah I might be. I might be. I mean, right. I watched your debate um, with Frank and, and the, the crypto person, and uh, it was fabulous. And I thought they both did a very, very good job. But since that debate, the price of crypto has done better than the price of gold. I don't think I'll be doing another debate, but <laughs> that's interesting thoughts, Ian. Um, and 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 just to bring it home, you know, I I want the folks to understand that even though you don't think gold's going to five thousand, you're still a believer in gold. You still you still feel it. It, it deserves and, a, a place in uh, one's portfolio. So and, and I have the last word. And I have and I have more gold in my portfolio than than might it might sound like here. So no, I'm a believer in it. It's been so good to me. I think it has a future. It does retain its value. It's got a history that crypto doesn't have. So I'm not saying anyone should uh, completely change or get out of gold, but no, no, I'm a believer in gold, but I'm, I'm a believer in a store of value. If there is a stock market crisis or a currency crisis, I think gold will do extremely well compared to other assets. And so that's why I have quite a chunk of my portfolio in gold. Sound, sound words there. Ian uh, Telfer, this was a real treat. I appreciate it. I know you have a limited time. So thank you uh, for coming on the show today with me. Thanks, Danny. Great chatting. Take care. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. We'll have much more for you. So be sure to stay tuned to stansberryinvestor.com. In the meantime, don't forget to sign up for premier content you can't get anywhere else at daniellacombone.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching.